Typically with a soundtrack, the way that you want to adjust your volume or the feel of your soundtrack throughout time to make adjustments for voiceovers or other sounds, real sounds that you're mixing in, is to just go through and change the volume along the timeline. Now, when you have soundtracks even in smart sound that are just single layer soundtracks that's pretty much all you can do you can come over here to the little volume icon and this gives us our grid now what we can do is we can set the volume globally just by grabbing this bar and dragging it down or we can actually set keyframes along the way here say we want to come out here we know at 10 seconds we'll be ramping up so we'll Set that keyframe there. We may start at 100%, a few seconds out, we'll come here. We can pull that down, just grab some little keyframes. And that way we can just select these and pull them down as we need to, and that would adjust our volume. Again, that would be if we're just doing a real rough mix here before going into our video editing program. Typically, I won't do much of my volume adjustments here. I'll just do them when I get to my video editor. But if I know exactly where I need to work on something, I'll go ahead and do it, at least a rough here, and then I can just do global uh, volume corrections later. But let me just play that back, and you'll hear that first part. So we could have voiceover, say, coming through here, and then the voiceover ends right about here. and so on. And that's typically what we would do. If we have a multi-layer like we have with this particular segment, I'm going to close this up and we have something called mood mapping. Now this is another really deep editing smart feature that Smart Sound provides for you. So not only do we have control of our custom lengths, we have control over instrumentation and other elements that can be changed a long time with the mood mapping feature. Let me just select this segment here and I can come over here to my mood and we can see we've got these different selections here. So say I've got it on full now, that's the default. I can come over here to background and that will do a global change. So you can hear it pulled out the trumpet, but kept our basic volume pretty much where it is. Now, if I set the whole thing to dialogue, we'll hear that it'll do even more. We can hear that it's pulled it back enough where I can talk over it. Uh, more of the instrumentation's pulled back, but the feel is still there. We still get that vibe going. Uh, the volume has been lowered a little bit, but it is definitely set for background. Well, that's really nice and that's a cool effect, but what if we don't want the whole 30 seconds to be that way? What do we do? This is where it's really cool. We've got these add mood segments up here. There's markers that we can put along the line here. So say going back to our original plan, if we start at full, we can come over here and say out here at about you know two, three seconds, we can add a mood marker. And then we can come over here to say around 12 seconds or so, add another mood marker, bring one here. You can just add a few down the line and add another one. Now I start at full because I know I want full in a few different places. I want it at the beginning, the middle, and the end. So I just start at my full. Now I can select any one of these segments and change the mood. So say here I've got voiceover coming in. So here I'll go to dialogue and say in here i've just got some other sounds coming in so i want that to go to the background and now listen to what this did for us automatically without doing any other customization or tweaking on it So you can hear that it brought the volume down here during the dialogue phase, brought the instrumentation out, 
brought it all the way back up here where I heard the trumpet playing, all the instrumentation here in the middle, and it slowly faded into this segment here. When it went background, the trumpet dropped out. We just heard the rhythm section. Then it came back to the end where everything was full. Now, this, I think, is probably the most mind-blowing of all of the features in smart sound is that we have this capability. There's a little more fine-tuning and tweaking we can do here. Say this transition here going into background is a little too soft, a little too slow getting there. We can actually change that. So I can select that segment and click my transition time. The default is two seconds. I can say, I want it down here at about one second. And that actually affected my transition out. So if I want it to transition in, I have to go to the previous segment and do my transition time down to one. And we'll see that little bar will change there, little guide going in there. So now if I listen to this back, here my transitions in and out of that segment will be a little snappier. <laughs> Now, doesn't that give that just a real natural feel to it? You don't hear things. They don't sound like they're really just fading in and out or that you're adjusting the volume over time there. They really sound like somebody's changed the arrangement, that they've re-recorded it entirely different. And what we're doing here is basically we're doing multi-track recording and mixing just like you would in a professional sound studio. So if we look at the elements here of the full resolution or the full volume mix, we can see that we have some sliders here. We can customize these even as we go. So if we want to drop out in instruments, say we want to pull the piano and vibes out all together there, and we just want the bass, drums, and trumpet, we can pull that up or just pull it down a little bit. So you can see it leaves a little asterisk there. So let's take a look here and see what that sounds like. You can hear that it comes back in when it comes up in the background. So there's a lot of customization, a lot of versatility here that you can play with the mood mapping. And I do this a lot. I will, because I'm also a musician, I tend to really tweak things a little more than just letting them go by default. So I'll come in and I'll, you know, if I want to kick up the bass a little more or pull up a guitar or a trumpet or whatever you know, elements that I have in there, some of these uh, will have you know, maybe a dozen different instruments in there if it's a really complex arrangement. This just gives you a lot of versatility, a lot of customization that really allows you to make every single soundtrack that you create in Sonic Fire Pro very custom, very unique, and very original. <laughs> 